Yeah, my treat. Thanks, Daniel. But honestly, everyone needs to stop handing me chocolate wherever I go. The headmistress, Madam Pomfrey, Mr. Potter, Robin, Kevin, and of course, the two of you. Even Colby Frey just the other day. It was the strangest thing. Speaking of, how was your Hogsmeade visit with Mr. Potter? Um, we sort of just got chocolate and hung out. Is that why you've been reading about the Patronus charm? Well, it was just a bit of light reading. I decided to give it a try myself. Really? How did it go? Show us! Expecto Patronum. And that's that. I'm still working on it. Oh, that's pretty cool. You've got quite the head start. Ah. Thank you, Mrs. Bloom, but we're not really looking for more chocolate right now. Oh! It's from Professor McGonagall. She wants us to finish up here and report to her office straight away. This can't be good. I'm surprised the headmistress waited this long to punish us. <laughs> Probably took her that long to think up a suitable punishment. I finally stopped seeing Dementors whenever I close my eyes, and now this. Need more dreamless sleep potions? I've got plenty of time to brew some. Thanks, Daniel. They help me sleep, but I still just... don't feel like myself. Well, I won't keep you in suspense any longer. Detention, all three of you. A month should do it. A month? Be glad it isn't too, Mr. Page. Your action certainly justified it. Yes, Headmistress. Now, handing out punishment isn't the only reason I called you in. It seems a rather valuable Goblin Forged sword has gone missing. Missing? Wait, you think one of us took it? No one's accusing you. Not yet, anyway. Ah. We didn't steal any bloody sword. We're not thieves. Ah. I'm sure there were others out after curfew that night, too. It can't just be the three of us. Yes, I'm well aware you aren't the only suspects, Mr. Page. I've spoken with the Freys, who claimed they were only out to steal unicorn hairs from Professor Slughorn's storeroom. I knew it! He was going to cheat! Well, I don't see them here, which means they've probably got an alibi. Indeed. Professor Slughorn's sneakerscope proved that they were not at the scene of the crime during the time window. Ho oh ho! <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Filch, but we're not locking students up. Thank, Thank you, you, Professor McGonagall. McGonagall. Without concrete evidence. So I suggest all three of you tread lightly while the professors look into this matter. Um, Professor McGonagall, I don't know if it'll help, but I think I saw someone in the castle that night. They were sneaking around, but I couldn't tell who it was. Not with the hood on. I think it's someone I've met, though. I can't believe we're the prime suspect in a robbery. Filch has just been his usual self, threatening students with dungeons and chains. Don't pay him any attention. I've got to... Uh, ask you something, though. What? 
What is it with the both of you? Did you really see what you said you saw that night? The hooded figure, I mean. What Daniel meant to say is, we've never doubted that you saw something. It's just that you've been so sleep-deprived recently. Sometimes people start seeing things when they haven't slept for a few weeks. I am probably exhausted, but definitely not mental, if that's what you mean. That's not what we're saying at... Hmm... <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, Professor. Are you saying there were multiple attacks? Hmm. 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 It's my pleasure, Professor. I hope I can be of assistance. I do have a bit of experience instructing students on how to cast a proper Patronus. It's difficult, but far from impossible. Yeah, is the charm really as difficult as they say, Mr. Potter? Sir? Well, the brilliant mind who first taught me this charm described it as highly advanced magic. It remains one of my favourite charms to this day. Very rewarding. Professor Brindamore said there were multiple Dementor attacks. Why are they suddenly so active? And so close to Hogwarts? Mr. Potter, if I may, you mastered the Patronus charm at a very young age, didn't you? Indeed. I was about your age when I learnt it. Hopefully that gives you some confidence. If only I could summon a corporeal Patronus like Mr. Potter. That would just solve everything. Did you receive bonus points in your OWL exams for this charm, Mr. Potter? Does it still grant bonus points now? I'll leave that question to Professor Brindlemore. As I said, the Patronus charm is very rewarding, in more ways than protecting my treasured memories from Dementors. Dementors? Just thinking about them makes me shiver. A Patronus can take the form of an animal, although many won't achieve that on their first try. If you're lucky, you may see a wispy, incorporeal Patronus that, while not as powerful, will offer a modicum of protection against a Dementor. Don't be too intimidated, though. Mrs. Flume from Honeydukes told me the other day that one of you can already cast an impressive incorporeal Patronus. Now, to demonstrate, would you mind showing everyone? Me? I'm sure you'll do just fine. Let's get started, shall we? First, think of a memory, the happiest you can remember. Expecto Patronum. Expecto Patronum. A bit nervous, are we? Don't worry, I'm sure it'll come back to you soon enough. Let's all practice together, shall we? Start with a happy memory. All right, everyone got a happy memory? Excellent. Now, clear your mind and focus on it. Then give your wand a bit of a twirl, like this, and say, Expecto Patronum! Got it? Let's give it a try, then. Here goes nothing. Expecto Patronum! Same as last time. Relax. And focus. Expecto Patronum! What's the problem? I've got my happy memory and can picture it vividly. Almost as vividly as... Still having trouble? 
Yes. Afraid I'm a bit... distracted. By the Dementor you encountered in the forest? Yes, and if that wasn't bad enough, I'm also currently Mr. Filch's number one suspect for a crime I didn't commit. Oh, I've been there. Sometimes I think I spent half my school days under suspicion of something. Hmm. What do I do? Relax, and don't get discouraged. This is a very hard spell. I didn't get it on my first try. Or my tenth, for that matter. Keep at it, focus on that memory, and it will come. Thanks, Harry. I'll keep trying. today Filch has given me a look like that. He even accused me of trying to make off with a suit of armor on the fourth floor, but I was just practicing my Patronus charm. How's it going? Any better? Nope. Just silver glimmers at best. I'm starting to think my Patronus has a natural aversion to Filch. Can't do it when he's practically stalking us. And the Dementors. I can't get them out of my head. How am I supposed to focus on a good memory with one of those things breathing down my neck? I know it seems hard, but I have faith in you. You'll find a way, you always do. Thanks, Ivy. While you practice the Patronus charm, Daniel and I can work on another angle. If we find the thief, your name will be cleared. And Filch can move on to other unfortunate students. Sounds good. Have you decided where to start? Not yet, but I had an idea. What if the theft and the recent Dementor attacks were related? What if there's a connection? It's just odd that the two incidents happened at the same time. Maybe, but it doesn't mean they're connected. And we should really be focused on finding the thief, not chasing Dementors. Dementors certainly don't leave footprints or anything, but the thief might have left something behind. What do you think? I think Daniel has a point. Should we inspect the crime scene then? Play detective for a change? No, I meant about the thief leaving something behind. Not in the castle, probably, but somewhere else. What do you mean? Think about it. What would a thief want with a very rare, very valuable goblin-made sword? Ha <laughs> 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 Um... <laughs> ah! Ah! Hmm... Ah. Aww. You! How dare you show your face around here! I beg your pardon, sir. 
We met just two days ago. You bought my family heirloom for ten measly galleons. I am sure you've made quite the profit off me. Hmm. As I recall, sir, you seemed quite eager to sell. We only made a fair offer. Fair offer? Is that what you call it? With a debt collector breathing down my neck and a non-liability clause in the contract? Everything was perfectly legal, sir. Now, if you'll excuse me... This isn't over. You'll regret crossing me. Thank you ever so much for doing business with Borgen and Burks. Huh? Huh. Excuse me. You work at Borgen and Burks, right? Um, I was wondering if you buy rare artifacts. In fact, we do. Have something to sell, do you? Something valuable? Huh. A sword, you say? Not just any sword, I assume. <gasps> hmm. Wow. Hmm. Wow, huh? Ah, we meet again. A polyjuice potion, I assume? No wonder why you were comfortable meeting here, in front of all these people. And the sword? Ah. Uh. Hmm. So that... Remind me again. What was our agreed price for this goblin-forged sword? Um... Borgen and Burks never gives an estimate without seeing the wear. I'm sorry, but this seems to have been a mistake. Good day. Hey. Oh, dear. Very sorry to hear that. But then, of course, I don't deal in stolen goods. Sorry, can't help you. That's it. You've lost. Show yourself, thief. When she... When she's Scrivenshaft, right? Scrivenshaft? As in the quill shop? What are you doing with the sword? That's my business. Go on then. Take me to the headmistress. I don't care. Hang on. No one's going anywhere until we know why you stole the sword. I told you. That's none of your business. Why did you have to chase me? I wasn't hurting you. Filch thinks I stole that sword. He wants to interrogate me. In one of the dungeons. He's stalking us everywhere now. And Mrs. Norris, too. I saw him hiding behind a tapestry with his shoes sticking out at the bottom one time. He's more pestering than a Dementor, I'd say. Take it up with Filch yourselves, then. It's not like I can get him to stop. Except that you can, with that sword you're holding. And make it up to us as well. Perhaps you can get us out of detention once in a while. Professor Flitwick just assigned us a four-foot-long essay on the scouring charm. You can help with that, can't you? Yeah, and after-class practice, too. You're a fifth year, after all. And, um... Oh! Find us the best way to sneak into the kitchens after curfew, in case anyone gets peckish. 
What? I'm sure we can find our own way around the kitchens. You can help us with one thing, though. Why did you take the sword, Winchy? You don't strike me as a thief. For the hundredth time, none of your business. <laughs> you want the sword? It's all yours. Hey, where do you think you're... Hmm. I'm sorry I'm such a coward. I hope you can forgive me one day. Love. Dad. The world never changes. The strong crush the weak and the weak cower in fear. But then there's the lucky, gifted few. A chosen one, hardened by the world's trials. Yet still, he remains hopeful and fearless. He dares to dream of a future filled with wealth, power, recognition. Everything he's ever wanted. And that future, it's here. His reign begins. His legacy awaits. Thank you.